the George Sanders impression contest is still going on. Yeah. Deadline is New Year's. People who have reached out have asked, and that is the deadline. And they know it's the deadline. But if you're interested in submitting your silky smooth impression. What else are you doing? Yeah. What else are you doing? Get in there. George Sanders, you know, in honor of last week's episode, Lord. I want to I want to cut the smart people down to size. Yeah. I'm dumb and I'm insecure about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I don't think you are dumb. Thank you. I listen to our our conversations later and oh, yeah? there are times where I'm like, wow. Chelsea's really smart. <laughs> Oh my god, oh that's my. like really high praise. I'm like, oh my god, like no. Oh my god, Victoria. <laughs> oh my god, Victoria. Oh my god, hey Victoria. Oh what? Hey Chelsea. Do you know what I could use right now? Tell me. Breath of Fresh movie. Yay! <laughs> I wish I had jingle bells to like. Merry Christmas. Christmas. It's Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, we never stop working, guys. Yeah. Never stop, never stopping. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We Th- showed up to the pod. We did. And that pod is called A Breath, a Breath of Fresh, Fresh Movie. Movie. Woo, you're here. Thank you for being here. Um, of course it's December twenty second. Uh, <laughs> it's December twenty sixth, right? Like for listeners. Oh yeah, it's if you're listening. Tomorrow, but no, it's the, not Christmas. But we're we're here on Christmas. Uh, We've come from the past. <laughs> we're from Christmas past, yeah. We're from Christmas past. Anyway, this is a Breath of Fresh movie, a weekly podcast where me, Victoria Harley. And me, Chelsea Pope. We watch a movie neither one of us has ever seen before, and then we talk about it. We, we, we might, might not talk about everything, but we, we'll talk about anything. anything. And that starts yeah. pretty soon. We don't, we don't, we're yeah. not like, oh, go to this minute marker. Yeah, I mean, to you know, to that point, before we get into messy. anything, do you think this is a movie that can? Is it possible to ruin Ishtar? I don't think. so. I don't think so. Honestly, I think what makes it good. I mean, every is is not the story. The, funny, the irony of that question: Is it possible to ruin Ishtar? Is that actually yes? Like someone oh, yeah, actively you know what? tried to. You're yeah. so tr- you're so right. You know what? It's already been ruined. It's already been ruined. So um, it's already damaged the lives. Yeah, and I, it's already done its carnage. And I just at the top, I just want to quote Elaine May, and it's the sort of famous. Well, I don't know how famous it is. If all the people who hated Ishtar had seen it, I'd be a rich woman. That's what Elaine May yeah. said about Ishtar. So she's not wrong. It's not yeah, wrong. the way this was smeared. Oh, and we'll get into it. Yeah, such a podcast phrase. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. We'll get. But first, let's, let's get into it. What kind of mattress are you sleeping on? What kind of mattress are you sleeping Notice on? Notice we are ad free, fellas. We and are ladies. and lady, and, and we're others. not gonna. <coughs> we're not gonna sell you. Thank you. Yeah, as almonds. Uh, I'm not gonna. <laughs> s- we're not gonna sit here and say, "Oh, you should sign up for Better Health." Problematic. Yeah. Hey, if it helps you, it helps you. We're not gonna. Um, su- we're not gonna tell you to get a mattress that has. Um, uh, there's something about fiber, particle fibers, or so- something. Okay. Plastic. I don't know. There's some something that, you know, microplastics, y'all. Yeah. This has nothing to do with anything. You should probably cut it. No, it's okay. Today's movie, this week's film is the off-maligned and criminally underappreciated comedy Ishtar, directed by Elaine May. Mm-hmm. We've talked about Elaine May three other episodes before this. We've watched almost everything this is, she's this, made. This now, concludes, right? this is it. This is the really? four, this is the fourth, and let, like we she's making one Mickey, now. We watched A New Leaf. We watched Heartbreak Kid. Heartbreak Kid. And we, I mean, we've no, watched Birdcage is not technically, no. but it is. But it's well, not. we didn't watch it for the pod. We no, just but love like these it. are just thinking of all the things mm-hmm. that she's like, done. She's done. It's and like, like primary okay. colors, similar, because um, she that was another Nichols. Oh yeah, she, and she wrote the screenplay. Gotcha. Um, that is a good movie. Um, but yeah, it's uh, this is kind of it. This is this is the movie that that killed her directing career. But it's not the movies. It's not really fair to say that. I'm just going to say it's it's much more complicated. Just a um, storm, a perfect storm of, of, of terrible bullshit and bad decisions fuckery. and pettiness. Because there are far worse movies out oh there. Oh my god! Do not to and, jump the gun on that, but in terms of just your the immediate like, this, oh, is this worth going and maybe not? But like, it's 
If you like Elaine May, I think it's you must. Oh, absolutely. Must. This is like you must. This is this is. Uh, I'm. I think yeah. If you if you're on Team Elaine May, yeah. Part of sort of the she doesn't have that big of a catalog. Well, you that's guys. What sucks. It's not that hard I know. to. Well, it wasn't that. I'm a little surprised we already have. It's also all of it. the uncredited work that she'd done. Right. Which, you know, let's just say that's a big part of why Ishtar came to be, why who's in it is in it. You know, a lot of this had to do with the fact that Elaine May had never had a supportive producer ever. Right. And then she script doctored a whole bunch of stuff for people like Dustin Hoffman and Warren Beatty. And they both realized like, oh, we owe her. And clearly she knows what works because those all worked. Yeah. You know, we're talking about things like Reds and Heaven Can Wait. Tootsie, you know, she yeah. helped a lot. She shaped those movies and, you know, I she's not credited. It's tough because she's not she's not afforded the same just room to 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 grow. Yeah. You know, she had Absolutely to not. she she had to start great and then she you know, she didn't cuz she needed to you know, they we let these other, there's these other directors or even like old time direct even with like Lord where it's it's a competent enough movie, yeah. but clearly that director, the people behind that film all were able to just treat that like they were sort of cutting their teeth a bit. This was no one's it was no one's passion project. It was more just right. like we're learning the craft and we're moving yeah. on. And that's the shame that mm-hmm. in Elaine May's case it's you know, she Yeah, she wasn't afforded the same kind of privilege. She of, you had oh, oh well it better be perfect. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, women suffer a higher price or pay a higher price for failures than men do. Yeah, you know it. It sucks. It's like this is a this is a just good film history twentieth century. Yeah, that's history said, of women directors. If you're yeah. interested in that, that's that. You know, I mean, I think she deserves as much respect as anyone else who's as particular and frustrating as say like I mean stories about yeah. Kubrick or you know legendary but she, she she took she took the lumps you know yeah, yeah but like um, you said yeah with Kubrick like it's the, the fact that we 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 call that genius in men but in women it's like she doesn't know what she's doing yeah she certainly didn't do what 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 Kubrick did either you know I mean no no we say this is obviously a fans of but, a number of his works but um, that being said it's like a, it, it's a this is it's it's a frustrating uh but necessary uh, it's, yeah. like like history lesson Ishtar, yeah absolutely I think. yeah no no i'm i'm glad we're going to talk about it um if you want to go back and listen to episode 1 episode 20 or episode 41 those cover a new leaf heartbreak kid and mikey and nikki respectively and and also just a lot of her backstory her backstory working up through the, because yeah. this i feel like it's it's good that we've got all that context you can you yeah can, i don't can, we don't need to revisit well, all that well there's just so much just with this movie yeah. that mm-hmm. you know there's so much there's so much to talk history. about that there's we so much can't, yeah, you know, we don't have time to talk about if Nichols you want to know the what, you want to know where she was born. Watch episode one <laughs> or watch. listen to watch it. You can Actually, watch it too. You could watch just the, watch it creep the little dial. Yeah, the the, 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 yeah, just watch the little, yeah. little uh, seismograph. Yes. Um, so this movie is about two middle aged and under talented musicians who just can't get a gig, and until their agent offers them one a job in Morocco in a mm. hotel lounge. And when they go there, they become embroiled sort of blindly in the scheme of international espionage and intrigue. And mm-hmm. it is as goofy and broad as it sounds. It's meant to be broad. You know, this is like a totally different flavor than Mikey and Nikki, which is a dark, I mean, funny in its dark way, but dark fucking movie about two codependent men. Well, they weren't necessarily as codependent. These two are codependent. Right. Like, they're so... Very much. And they're so insufferable. And for her to even cast two of... America's biggest and most celebrated and highest paid actors, Warren Beatty and Dustin mm-hmm. Hoffman, to play losers was kind of like even sort of an affront. Like, yeah. everything she does, though, is that. Like, and there was like a method to it. This absolutely. was, this was a very, these were very conscientious casting choices because initially it's like, why are they playing these kinds of kids? Like, I know Dustin Hoffman can do comedy and then sure. Warren Beatty too, but like, there's, so and this dynamic too or dustin hoffman's the more like like the ladies man ladies man and warren's like the hapless he's a little more like, like the, the follow like yeah the oafish one yeah. you know no, um yeah it's you, kind of cross against type yeah as far as as far as that guy's like but there's a reason and it's a very intentional yeah 
thing that Elaine May was doing. Yeah. Um, we also have Isabel Ajandi, um, Charles Grodin, who, yes. I mean, we've we've raved about him before. Not a surprise. Like, yeah. oh, God, here Victoria goes. Charles Grodin. He would, he would um, be another but, one of our but, pillar candles. But he would be a pillar candle. He's definitely a prayer candle for us. Prayer candle. Um, he is, for me, he, he just, he lifts this movie up. I, he, yeah, I'm remiss that there wasn't more, like, uh, as far as... He was so funny. As far as criticisms... Yeah, which I have some, you know. Oh, but like, yeah. I, me too. You know. That's the thing. Okay, I, it's, I, it's it, there. There could have been a great movie in here. Yeah. Uh, before we like really get into yeah, yeah, our yeah. our impressions of it and yeah, we could, tear apart yeah. the movie. Um, I I do think like it's there's sort of two camps. There's people who are like, no, terrible movie, and other people who are like, no, it's a masterpiece. I don't think it's either. It's yeah, it's right in the middle. And I will say, it's nice to see just again not jumping ahead on the reviews but getting getting it out of the way now that just yeah. um i like that we've recalib we're, we seem to be slowly in the film world recalibrating mm-hmm. our um consensus on this movie sorry just <laughs> dropping like, my no, shit we're recalibrating our consensus on ishtar it seems like um because a number of people yes obviously there's the diehards and the apologists yeah. and then the people who are and just then- like this is a steaming pile of shit but then there's more and more people who are like this isn't as bad it's, as people said it was, but it's not great. It's, it's, it's just fine. It's fine. It's like a two and a half star kind of, like it's got its, it's shortcomings it's a, for sure, but it's, it's hot, not incompetent. It's a hot weather comedy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we expect something, but I think it's smarter than your average. I think there's there's parts of it that are incredibly funny. Yeah. And sophisticated. And then there are these other parts that are like, this feels like they didn't finish working this out. It honestly, like watching the trailer, it yeah. felt like I was like, oh, ooh, this is going to be like a problematic, like cringe fest. And it's really not as much of that it, as it is yeah. just kind of, um, it just, it, it sort of gets lost in its own exposition. Like it gets par- like weighed down by, mm-hmm. it's almost too grounded. I would in say in some ways. Yeah. In some ways, it feels too because there's some silly stuff, and that's actually. Yeah. I almost felt like kind of starved for more of that. Yeah, I had the wrong. I think I had the wrong bad movie expectation placed on this. Interesting. Okay. You know? I mean, I guess when it was being developed, like uh, initially, Dustin Hoffman suggested like the whole thing should just stay in New York. They shouldn't even go to Morocco. I'm not gonna lie. I don't disagree with him. I mean, it's that's an interesting. The that's the. It's the best. It would be kind of funny if of the like movie. the whole. The whole movie was them trying to decide whether to go. You know what I mean? Or, or, because I gotta say, the first twenty minutes are fucking hilarious. And like, you're so right because they are deliberating, and it is this thing like, oh, we gotta go to Ishtar. Like, yeah. I, like, like what is Dustin th- Hoffman's character really too is like confronting. Like, are we that bad? Like, is this yeah. really? And like, it could have even been just like a night of these guys. You could see them going from different clubs and open mics mm-hmm. and bombing and this and that, and then it tests their friendship and they're still their the girls, the wives them. get the, the, mm-hmm. they still get left in the course of the evening. This could have been like one of those like, like a day a, trippers, but with or another Mikey and Nikki, type Mikey thing, and Nikki, but, but like, like night singers broader. that just are not, yeah, yeah. But like a Simon, like bad Simon and Garfunkel, and then yeah. finally at the end of it, it seems like they're going to go their separate ways, and then they're like. It like about one's gonna leave the other, but they're at the airport, and then you maybe they do like an RRR type of like hand clasp, <laughs> and then go. all of a sudden yeah. it just the final shot is them in Ishtar performing, sing, performing, yeah. and then everyone there is like what, and then this credits. <laughs> I do think it was kind of interesting though how like once they just once Dustin Hoffman shows up in that scene and like they start just playing the music that people want to hear, yeah. Like how they're so successful, they get to feel like stars. They felt like good. They've never like had a better. They've never had a better set. Like you I know? like the energy of that. Like it's almost like it if fun. that the whole movie was them bombing in New York, and then yeah, and then like and then they go at the end of the movie, they finally are like, no, you know what? This is worth going. Like yeah, I would rather be in some foreign country whatever if i can be chase my dream if we can do hey, this together i'm gonna say i went to not that i want to move to key west but i went down there once and mm-hmm. the, the realization that like if you can play cover songs of fucking baby boomers love uh you can make a little a living just like playing live yeah. music and you don't have to be that good i mean even i look i sometimes think <laughs> i'm like i look at like cruise singers or whatever yeah because i'm like they're not bad they're obviously pre- like they're people on the, they're, yeah. they're some they're pretty good but it's also like oh that 
That's attainable. Yeah. It's like the piano, <laughs> playing the piano at the White Lotus. Yeah. yeah. Well, that that was just... I love that. I really enjoyed that. And she was actually really good, you know, She too. was. So it was one of those, like, oh, she's not just... Yeah. We get like, her, her dream pursuit is valid. It's very Absolutely. valid. Yeah, totally. Um, but we're not yeah, here to anyway, talk about White Lotus. We're not Lotus. here to talk about White Lotus. I can make anything about White Lotus. Um, I, I, I won't okay, stop you. So, like, in that first 20 minutes, one of the great things I love is that, I guess, one of them's at their gig, and they're playing the piano, and the waiter, like, accidentally bumps into the piano. Yeah. Like, it's just so clear how, like, not important they are. Like, right. The humbleness of those, those details were great. Like, at one point, I think he accidentally, like, trips on the cords so like the mic goes out for yeah. a little bit and um i don't know it it, it feels like th- they're they're mediocre all the singing by the way is live nothing was dubbed in later yeah. and it really contributes to no the, it sounds like the it. tinniness of it it's fun it's, it's very funny i really liked how i saw a review that was saying it's they should have been they should have been better or better liked at one point. And I was no, like, no, I liked that they not. were awful the whole time. No, they were like. That's the joke throughout. Even at the end when they're in the display, they're the only one with a bunch of sales stickers on there. Yeah. I yeah. love that subtle dig. That's of like, so they funny. still suck. They, yeah, we have to promote this album. Oh, yeah. no. That's the biggest they concern. Still, but they also are on the, the, yeah. the in the window display kind yeah. of thing. So. That was a perfect ending, actually. Like, a perfect way to end it. The yeah. shot on that. I thought that was a wonderful, like, callback to the very beginning I and like the discussion that. they have in front of the glass well, yeah that, they that very were asked, just as good well you know? just like that aspirational because like this movie is about people like the vast majority of people in show business are like these people they're yeah. not the stars well you have to have that kind of naivete to like yeah succeed at oh, the end yeah. of the day too. No. unless unless i mean some people they don't even no, have to no, develop no. that far in their but want to get what they want Fra- but fran lebo has talked about that in yeah. pretend it's a city how like there are lots of people who grow up in new york who don't do as well as people who come to New York because the people who grow up there know how hard it is. Yeah, they're the people constantly who, around it. Right, the people who come have a kind of, they don't know how, uh, like, how crazy it's what they're doing. It's better to be a little clueless. I <laughs> a felt, little bit. I felt that way being in yeah. L.A., like, growing up in Southern California. It's, sure. That there's a similar mentality. It's like, yeah, it's, it's funny seeing characters like the ones in this movie that, yeah, yeah. That, you know, they could be successful right? <laughs> in I, a I, niche way. And I like how, again, what They're you were saying. They're just so bad, too, though. There's the whole hang-up around, like, schmuck. And he can't yeah. say it. Smuck. Smuck. <laughs> yeah, smuck. Smuckers. No, no. Smuckers. I thought that was, like, that kept happening. I didn't know quite why he had a Texas accent, why his character was from Texas. I didn't think. I the, didn't the, pick the, up. That, I didn't, that felt really, like, unnecessary. Well, there was a lot. No. On that note, I'd say that and I mean, some other things were Unnecessary. felt unnecessary it kind of weighs it down because the yeah. fun is that dynamic exactly and they're sort of it's that sitcom yeah almost like a not ren and stimpy but no, i don't but know they're, like they're this... insufferable but they're insufferable together they're like two people who can um the yeah. anything is an inspiration for a bad song yeah you know they remind me of the angry beavers so okay. as, far, as far as Nickelodeon millennial, that's funny cartoon references, like because they're yeah they're, they, yeah they're 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 insufferable, but they're insufferable together. Yeah, they're codependent. I mean, <laughs> and they both have the same kind of delusions. Yeah, you know, like they share the same delusion. It's like what is that called? Like when a madness is shared by two people. Oh, there's a French term just, for it. I don't know. I don't know, but it is nice that they, they like, validate each other's talent. Like, they both have the same taste. Yeah. And it has that notion of, well, yeah, there's like a pot for every lid. Yeah, exactly. And I, I really liked... Lid for every pot. Yeah, I really liked how um, when... Okay, so Dustin is Chuck and Warren's Lyle. When Chuck is threatening suicide, mm-hmm. and you know he's like, but don't, don't tell the police because, like... <laughs> Uh, the, the press will ruin my chances in show business yeah. if people ever find out I tried to job. It's like, dude, this is the last thing you need to be worrying about. But that I've known people like that, yeah. like who have that kind of level of thought about themselves. And it's like, you're right. I mean, it's it's delusion, but it's not if it works. Yeah, you well, know? what if they find my journals when I die and they want to publish them, you no, know? Yeah, I know. Oh, God, no. That's I a thing. absolutely you're harbor like, are you that. Sens- no. You're censoring yourself trying to, you, you know. Oh, no, I harbor that. That uh, vanity yeah. and that fantasy a lot. Oh my god! Oh, what no. do you think of me when I'm gone? Oh no! Like journals. Who tells your story, Victoria? I, I do. In these, yeah. <laughs> let's get the record straight. Well, there you go. <laughs> this person's never mentioned. <laughs> just give. Just you have to leave behind as much yeah. prolific media, intentional prolific yes. media. Um, no, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, let's see. 
the wife's the wives leaving was pretty great. Um, yeah. I especially loved the part where um, after uh, Warren, I'm just going to call him Warren Beatty. Yeah. Warren Beatty's Lyle, his wife has left him. He's got the keyboard on his lap. He's sitting on the couch. He's clearly drunk and upset and crying. And then the phone rings and he just like immediately stands yeah. up and over to get like the, the piano falls just off his lap. Just, just, just everything is dropped. Yeah. Like it was so funny to me. Like I, that was my first laugh out loud it's good moment. good physical humor, it but was it was very, very like, funny. Like, yeah. Grounded. Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's like, it's broad. They're, these guys are supposed to be idiots. They're supposed to be insufferable. I, nobody likes dealing with them. Right. So if you don't like them, that's kind of intentional like, it's 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 yeah yeah that's intentional but also the camaraderie like you want to be on i like when justin hoffman wants to walk home alone yeah uh, but he's upset and then more and they both end up at the same bar he's like no you you, you, don't, you go over, over there. there you go over there and then he's like i'll have a bourbon he's like, like no, no don't order a bourbon order. you're gonna fall flat on your face he'll have a beer like and then he gets the beers the very parenting oh it, like they're like brothers again so codependent yeah it's so yeah. like looking out for each other or yeah that they're you know the any money that's made it's understood that they're gonna share yeah. i don't know it, it's they're an interesting pair and it, it's once a, it's another set of figures in this elaine may gallery of male losers like mm. you know um but this feels a little brighter and cheerier and and has a lot more joy in it yeah um, but at the same time some of the funniest jokes were very i mean it's not a satire but there were moments that were like teasing satire like when they're in the market and yeah. all the difference intelligent they're all wearing officers. different types of yeah. outfit. No, like, they're wearing the hat. No, this. Yeah, the, the Texans the the are wearing the Sheik's outfit, and then they're wearing the tourist outfit. And those, those are just tourists, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, that was, like, kind of funny. And, and the whole, um, again, Grodin being the CIA agent who's very cavalier. Hey, you know, if you can just sort of feed me information, we'll pay you a little bit of money. You know, it's fine. Yeah. And he's like, well, how much money? He's like, well, you know, about I don't know, ten to fifteen a week. But you know, you can't put a price on democracy. <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's good subtlety, and I like I like when he has the bit with the phone. There wasn't enough Charles oh, Grodin. No, and like the whole like, oh, I bugged you. Yeah. The pen. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Like just very. Yeah, it's just very matter of fact. Uh huh. No, yeah, of he's course. He's talking to the president. No, we didn't shoot. No, why would we do that? Wait, that's, that's insane. Yeah. We wouldn't would shoot anybody. Yeah. Just, I was like, yeah, get out. We can still say we made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> like, he felt like such a real representation of the CIA in that black ops. We can't do anything that is on a budget it's, sheet. It's you that know. incompetency of the... Of, it had yeah. someone, someone on Letterboxd said something to the effect of like, it's like burn after reading. Yeah, like I a, saw that it's review. Like a, it's a, like yeah, a predecessor the, the, to that. Yeah, and also, you know, I mean, what you were saying or alluding to earlier about like... Um, John Malkovich's character in that movie. Yeah, was like... Just the frustrating... <laughs> who the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, his rage is so good yeah. in that. Um, yeah, and I, I, I know what you mean about... Um, the sort of cringing or being a little bit worried about I think we're we're highly or I'm I feel highly sensitive to something that's like set in a Arab country. I just assumed it was going to be a lot of that kind of lowbrow humor and it wasn't it really was I think the most that happened is just when you first when Warren Beatty first meets um uh, the woman Shira, Shira, Shira. um and what then it's like gro he's like yeah. groping her a lot yeah. she doesn't seem bothered by it in any way well, and I was like okay well there, are you talking about when Warren Beatty is doing it yeah or, yeah I mean yeah. it's I I was debating whether or not I thought that was funny because eventually she I didn't does think it was funny I didn't think it was terrible I was just like it's yeah. like it's because they're like it, leaning too hard on the joke it went it went on a while and then she eventually does sort of snap at him. Yeah. I will say that the two of them, you may know this, that, that Warren Beatty and Isabella Jandi were in a relationship together, but mm -hmm. it soured during the course of this filming. So it's, I'd be interested to know if this was when the, the relationship was good or yeah. it was bad. I didn't really feel chemistry. Oh, I felt from zero her no. towards any her of them. Her character is underdeveloped. Like a, yeah. You know. It's like, I don't know how much is that supposed to matter, but it also just, it, it makes those scenes feel like, fall flat for me because I'm mean, like when she's his, rapping um yeah. what's his face wrapping his head and yeah that's I just like these moments that sh are supposed to I think be tender or they're something. supposed to feel intimate I think or like mm. there's like Didn't attraction and I just no. never it was definitely empty of also any... the head wrapping was weirdly cut there was a yeah. way it was kind of kept going like medium wide to huh. like 
just well because fa- each... this movie went through some hell and exactly so. exactly and it shows it and shows i kind of felt that way yeah. although i really liked mikey and nikki or i appreciated it uh-huh. a lot more than than this one but similarly some, it's just some so much there's just so much footage to be cutting through and i'm like yeah yeah, yeah. It, elaine may shot um uh, 108 hours of footage a typical comedy is about 30 hours right <laughs> so spent spent about a lot almost of four almost four times as much yeah. not not quite um but you know and, and we know this about her we right. know this about her any warren Beatty knew this about her and when he advocated for her to direct this he wanted to be the supportive producer that she had never had because he thought I yeah oh her he, he, she's he, amazing let's do that and yeah. then he you know she ran with it she did what she always does and you know i heard there's a lot okay there's a lot of fucking mythology around what happened on set and around things she said or didn't say yeah. the production designer um i'm i'm blanking on his name right now he's kind of an un, he's an unreliable tr- resource but somehow an unreliable this, narrator unreliable you know, in the sense that lots of crew members have since been like, no, that never happened, mm-hmm. you know. So I, I think it, it was somebody who wanted to have a story. Um, one of those stories is that um, she asked the production designer to find the perfect sand dunes, you know, and we kept going, give her your options. No, I don't like these. No, I don't like these. And then finally, like, OK, here they are. And then, you know, she comes to look at it. This has to be it. This is perfect. And then she's like, oh, no, I don't want sand dunes. Flatten it out. Like, the thing is, they carted sand in because they filmed this in Morocco. Right. And they needed sand on hard dirt, which that sounds it's... more like what happened. And this isn't like a thing anyone else recalls. Um, there's also this whole issue of the there's a blind camel. And yeah. in order for it to look blind, they were like, oh, we need a blue eyed camel. And apparently that's a very rare thing. And, you know, the search for that was important. But then you don't just look for one. You need four because you need backups. And, you know, and it, it just there's all of this extra shit heaped on this movie. And the, the fact, oh, the budget went up and up and up. And it's, yeah, it's sad, too, because that's the portion of the movie I don't care, care about. Exactly. I care about the guys and the story. Yeah. I, I'd rather see that. I don't, I don't you know. No, exactly. And that, again, I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I don't that, care about the blind camel, you know, like it's just, yeah. it's one of those, just, it's, it's an extra thing we don't it's need. It's just a thing. Yeah. It's okay if something's wrong with their, their, I don't know what other justification there could have been about them just not being able to, to ride, but like, yeah, I don't know. It could have um, been any other thing. Again, people, I, I don't want to focus on the budget, but unfortunately, I think I do have to address a few things just it's because pretty it's, important part, to, it's part of the story. how the story, how this um, film was it's, received. It started with a budget of $27.5 million, which is a lot. That's an awful lot because the average for a comedy was like $17 million, so it's quite a bit. But that's because um, about $12.5 million was being split for the salaries of uh, Warren Beatty, Dustin Hoffman, and Elaine May. And hers, of course, was the lowest, and she's directing, writing, and you know, doing all that. You know, costs went up because they were filming in Morocco. Why are they filming in Morocco and not like in the desert near, you know, L.A.? You you know, realism could be part of it. There was a desire to film on location. But actually, the truth is Columbia Pictures was owned by Coca-Cola at this time. And they're the ones producing this. Coca-Cola had frozen assets in Morocco. The only way they could get rid of them was to spend them in Morocco. So guess what? Yeah, let's go to Morocco. So the, yeah, it's, it's, it was a consensual choice then. Yeah. It's not her just being not like, just we her. gotta do this in Morocco. It wasn't it's just like, her. No, they wanted no, to. They, they were like, They let's, were being money minded. So they, they were, were actually, trying, they didn't want to spend real money on this. They actually saved uh, money. This was, this was off a different balance sheet this altogether. Was, yeah. Like, and again, I don't give a fuck, but people d- made it important. Uh, and one person in particular who I'll get to. But May was like, again, given the freedom to do anything she wanted, she guess she's going to do it. It's Elaine May. OK, mm-hmm. you don't know who you're dealing with. Like, come on. She really wanted to make a movie that was similar to the Bob Hope and Bing Crosby, like road to fill in the blank kind of movie. Right. Like a road, a road movie. A road movie, which what's funny is like, I don't think warren ever got totally on board with because he didn't want it to be compared to that she's like well that's exactly what i want it to be uh dustin hoffman made his suggestion early on but then when that wasn't taken he resigned himself and was just like okay whatever we're doing we're doing it and just accepted you know yeah. it um there was more of a wrestling match going on also warren Beatty brought on a dp he was very enamored of yeah um who had you know shot 
Apocalypse Now and some other very great things. But he's this Italian DP who's never shot a comedy. So there's a lot of stories about the DP and Elaine and disagreeing about where the camera should go because she's trying to frame for comedy and he's framing for, you know, a beautiful composition. And it's different. We're trying to achieve different things. I almost wonder if that would have helped it if they leaned really hard in that direction. Maybe. Aesthetically. Maybe. Gone a different way. But I also do think like, yeah, it's a shame that this couldn't have stayed either in New York or been uh, like a continental U.S. thing. And then the then like the final beat of it being that they end up. No, I agree. I mean, I think it that I, I must admit, I was like, I think that's a good idea. You yeah, know? I mean, like, they're the best part of it. They, and it, that's the I stuff mean, that she's doing the best shooting, too, because she's yeah. letting them play. Yeah. She's getting these moments, you know. Yeah, like New, she, that's her New York, best stuff. The New York stuff is great. That's like, the it's, best it's, stuff. It's the funniest part. I mean, I because I was watching it, and I was like, this is really good. Why yeah. do people? Why do people hate this? This is really good. Yeah. And I'm not gonna say there's nothing redeemable about when they get to Morocco. It's just that it, it changes into like this adventure action again, hot weather comedy. Yeah. Like, it's like I don't want to watch that. I didn't really like, want to. Now see I have that. this flavor in my mouth. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So there were lots of disagreements. Um, the thing that you know I think is interesting though is that one crew member I, I'm not sure who it was, but they commented on like, listen. Directors have to control their set. And there's a lot of different ways people can do that. Yeah, Elaine, when she wasn't sure what to do, would stall. And to make sure that no one bothered her while she stalled, it was like she would kind of create a problem or give people something to do and create chaos, basically, yeah. Yeah. while she figured out what she was going to do, you know? And you can you can call that shitty if you want, or you can call it. But, but it's, it's um, she understood that she could that she had that power. I'm allowed to be particular. I'm allowed to go, hey, I want this, this, and this. And then when you come back, it's like, oh, I don't need that. I just needed you to go away. You know, it's like the truth of it. And I think it's interesting because when when they came back from Morocco, um, it's worth mentioning that Warren Beatty at this time was also very, t- he was close with somebody who was the chair of Columbia Pictures. Right. Um, this guy, uh, I think his name is literally Guy McElwain. Warren Beatty comes back from Morocco and basically tells him, Elaine can't direct. This is the, re- the thing he reportedly told him. And it didn't necessarily, it, it sort of set a, a, a tone at Columbia yeah. in the post-production process. And then what happened was, there was a change at Columbia, basically, because again, they were owned by Coca-Cola. Yeah. So the guy who runs Coca-Cola, or is the like, he, he puts in a new chair and it's this asshole, David Putnam. David Putnam was a film producer mm-hmm. who, like in previous years, was very vocal in the press about big budgets being like bullshit. And yeah. like Warren, he specifically had animus against Warren Beatty for like Reds and how, oh, that was so much money they spent on that. And like he ought to be, I think they literally said he ought to be spanked for that or something. Also, very old Hollywood. Yeah. He ought to be spanked for that. He's also English. So I think some. He ought to be spanked. I mean, for that. I'm not trying to. There's something about an English accent in America that gives people, they just sort of assume you're right or you have credibility. Yeah, it's that's amazing. how we felt about, we were just talking about this great British baking show. We assumed yeah. that Paul Hollywood and Prue, you know, that Until they, that they knew. Week and week then episode. at just yeah. the veil, yeah. we looked, behind, we got to see behind the, now, it, yeah. now everything comes into question. It's all in question. What do those Brits know? Yeah. The, gla- <laughs> the glass has cracked. The glass has cracked. You can thank Paul Hollywood for that. Yeah. Paul um, and Prue. So there's this big change. So the, basically a person who had personal problems with both Warren Beatty and Dustin Hoffman. I'm not sure what the other issue with Dustin Hoffman was. He just didn't like him or something. Um, so, and he hates big budgets. Yeah. And he comes in and now he's in control at Columbia. And anytime a new person comes into a studio, and Elaine May said something to this effect, she was like, listen, it doesn't matter who you are or what you are, they don't like you because you were approved by somebody else, you weren't their idea, and now they have to own the consequences. Yeah. So he came in and he knew that it was very well known publicly that he had this sort of like tiff with Warren Beatty. So he was like, okay, guess what? I'm not gonna touch this at all. Yeah. Uh, I'll stay out of it. Yeah. But that made it look toxic. Yeah. And then they miss their their deadline. And then the post-production budget starts to balloon. Yeah. Because one of the conditions of all of this was that Beatty, Hoffman, and May would all have input on Final Cut. Now, she's like 10 months into editing this yeah. fucking thing. And then they suddenly realize, oh, shit. If we're going to have any say, we need to start our own cuts. So at one time, there were three different edit teams working around the clock, like cutting the same movie 
For this one movie. For this one movie. And they were being paid double time. Oh, my gosh. And it's just, and it's all at the studio's expense. It's so funny thinking about something like this and all that rigmarole. And meanwhile, you have stuff like Batgirl or whatever that just, just gets <laughs> just canned. Just canned. Just for tax. Like, a mat, like there's no way this would happen yeah, today. Just no. to, like just to, to, Th- this, to put it in today's yeah. terms. Like, no, and I for s- a B at best comedy, no. road movie, also, like, whatever. So this Insane. is all, right, so this is all going on. It's it's getting more expensive. But you know what? Okay, so it's more expensive. You can barely get a good movie made these days. I mean, seriously. And I, I, and this was a flop in the sense that they spent a lot on it and they didn't get it back in the, in the theater. Yeah. Technically speaking, this is like, it's a cat's. It's somewhere in that neighborhood, you know, when you adjust for inflation. It, yeah, but, but in those terms are, of failure. This was, this was this is one of those notorious. It's a notorious. It's known it for is. having been a box office bomb. But that doesn't make it a bad movie. Exactly, and that's the important distinction here. And all of this talk about money Cats happened. Cats isn't a bad movie either. Right, and that's right. what we're really trying to get. They at. were chasing a technology that just wasn't there yet. <laughs> it was a technology. It was a technology. Like, release the butthole cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, and, you know, there's also this thing that happened, like, right, where it's like, well, we don't want to pass on this movie because look at all these talented people that are involved. But if we say yes and we know there's these three uncompromising talents who are mm-hmm. all difficult to work with are going to go together to the Sahara and make a movie, yeah, there's going to be problems. Yeah. So, I mean, it's – but anyway, this guy Putnam comes in. He won't touch the thing. And then when they start missing deadlines, suddenly there start being th- th- these – articles start appearing in the press and in mm-hmm. the trades about telling these stories about how difficult it was on set telling yeah. stories about how it's going over budget this so is that, a don't worry darling situation it is this is it the really, equivalent of a yep, don't worry darling it is and there was so much press before the, the film ever premiered that was all about how expensive it was which by the way not really a a, Charles Grodin was like not a public issue yeah you're not gonna get the money yeah like you know if they save that money do you think it goes to like libraries no yeah they just put it it stays in the studio they make it yeah that is their business not ours it's about how it's framed it's a it turns into this political thing exactly and And so that's why you know uh, well because they let a woman behind the camera the one time they let give a woman any any well and that's just it like this killed her career and it stemmed the opportunities for other women. It was almost like it's, it's, like they were looking it's, for... Is that st- how you say it? Stemmed or is it stymied? I always thought it was stymied. Well, that's also a word. I, I'm, I talking, just was I'm saying stemmed. No, stem. stymied is also I thought a word. You, I, okay, I was like... I'm talking about like, I think it's like a... Yeah, yeah she, no, stemmed was stemmed. correct. I think yeah. I just got scared. It's like when I found out epitome was epitome and not yeah. epitome. Yeah, I, I hear that. And I was like, or like wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> or like epiphany. Yeah, like this, that was a tough one. Like, Ep- Epiphany. Epiphany. I thought it was Epiphany. Uh, Versace. Versace. Yes, that's a really big one. That one was in my head for a while because I was like, oh, like lace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Classy. <laughs> oh, there's a there's another one too. I'm, I'm the blanking logic. on it. Yeah, exactly. There's the a logic. bunch of them. There's oh, there's so many. Them. I can't think of I them. I probably now. said them on this podcast. Without Sta louder. <laughs> SDA, that's good. Something like that. Uh, Why do we do this to ourselves? Um, Anyway, so like all this is to say that there's a bunch of bullshit that doesn't matter being talked about. And nobody Mm -hmm. is really talking about, you know, is this funny? Yeah. And there were some good reviews. I think Janet Maslow, New York Times, and I believe Time Magazine both had some yeah, Ni- nice got, things to some, say. Yeah, you have ones at the time you wanted to. No, I don't have. You know, I, I didn't do that deep of research. That's okay. No, you did. Well, you got like I sitting just here w- with like six pages of research. I know, but well, I didn't do that, that much. That was mostly just so I could get through the story of like this is generally what no, happened. It's, like, it's and very if you're important, context. and if you're interested, like, there's a lot of lore out there about this. I encourage you to read up about it and you know be angry. <laughs> it's there's. Is it reviewed? Yes, Should review I time. Jump, or review am I time. jumping ahead? No, no, no. We're, we're, okay. You're right on track. Because I will say, speaking of reviews, yes. Um, you know, Rotten Tomatoes is a forty percent uh, score, thirty nine percent audience goes pretty, pretty unified okay. consensus there. But um, first on Letterboxd, a couple of the reviews I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, from just just this Adam shout out to Elaine for losing a studio sixty million dollars. Hell yeah! <laughs> I, I like to like poise just like honestly slay. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, uh, three and a half stars. Karsten, uh, stupid but also genius. Um, yes. And then I yeah. also w- let's see what else did I on on IMDb four point six out of ten. 
Let's see. Uh, Richard Brody, New Yorker, uh, said uh, an elaborately antique musical of startling, even disturbing originality. Um, mm. But then Gene Siskel from the Chicago Tribune says the film fails at every level. Oh. Then uh, I mean, hot fudge love. It's it's it's. Let's see. There's another. I know, right? <laughs> the there's, songs are pretty. The songs funny. are so funny. <laughs> like you're just you're just lying. Well, I think there's um, you're just lying. <laughs> It's just lying. I, just lying. I think, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this one I think I agree with the most. Yeah. Uh, David Kerr from Chicago Tribune, he says three out of four ratings, said, Ishtar is a good movie, but you can't help but wonder if lurking somewhere in those cans of outtakes, there isn't mm. a great movie too. Yeah. So I almost feel like I would have I would have watched a 70-minute cut of this. I, I know right. that's insanely right, right, short, right. but I would watch that where it's just mostly just them Songwriting. struggling with yeah. their music stuff oh actually them, them like of it being just 80 percent them and barely any other characters I, mean, I would watch that when the scenes in morocco i did like were like when they're dying of thirst in the desert and they're still coming up with songs yeah and then like they remember one of the ones later and he's like we didn't need a pencil yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good i it's, mean there there is a sweetness to them they're so bad, but they so believe in each other's they, work. Yeah, the way they, that they're like at the even the building credits of like they're like they're singing this thing that sucks, but yeah. they both think it's like really smart. Telling and the truth, truth is um, dangerous, dangerous business. business. Yeah, and they're singing it out of key. Tell out of, off, honesty offbeat. and popularity don't go hand in hand. Yes. <laughs> I had that hot much love. <laughs> so, <laughs> so bad. And his, wa- his wife is just like, she can't even look at him. And She's, then she just leaves him. It's bad. It's bad. Oh, I liked also. And Carol Kane. I like Carol is Carol. Carol's Carol. That's funny. She was, it was a delight to see her. I literally yeah. wrote Carol Kane exclamation point on my yeah, pad of paper. I'm she's like, just, oh. it's delightful to see oh, her. Oh, I love her. her. She's fun. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad that they walked out on them. That was good. Yeah. Um, I have to bring up the far side because I'm sure you've heard this story too is mm. that like Gary Larson drew a cartoon of like the video store in hell and he draws like everything is just Ishtar. Oh, nothing I but remember Ishtar. seeing this. Yeah. And he drew it not having ever seen the movie and he yeah. said years later he actually saw the movie and much to his surprise he was like that was pretty funny. That yeah. wasn't actually that bad. So he actually apologized. He's like even though there's lots of things I should apologize for he's like I'm actually going to apologize for this one. Yeah. Um it's it's definitely been a punchline but if if you're a person who has been like oh Ishtar that's t- oh, that's terrible but you haven't seen it? Yeah. You've been misinformed. You've been lied, you've been you've been lied, lied to. to. You've been lied it's to. It's pretty good. I think I stand by yeah. the whole it's really not that bad but it's, not. it's like it's not two to, I would say 2 to 2 and yeah. a half stars. What did you think? I have to ask. More like two, honestly. Did if I'm you being really honest. did you find the um, the tit reveal? Did you find that funny or no, it really or wasn't? Was I really like, didn't care about that stuff. It was like so I said, fast. I just don't really. It was. It, it doesn't do much okay. for me. That 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 yeah. The whole were, joke. The whole like the, um, the gender joke. That the was, gender they were trying stuff, to go for there. Like I, truly, once they were in a star, I didn't really. I, it was hard to yeah. stay engaged. I really, I also don't genuine, gen- yeah. generally care for the the espionage or a man who knew too much or too little or what. I don't even. I don't had, like that. Yeah, it had that. I don't, I don't like those kinds of it like was, oh bumbling idiots that kind of because it's Cars Two is that. Yeah, you know, and no, this is this it, is like the Cars Two. It, it is very broad <sighs> in that way, and like, but in the way that like it does display American unexceptionalism. Like but it's like it's like. But it's, I would but rather it, she just made a separate movie about yeah. like a Charles like she. Could Charles have done, Grodin. She could have done a whole film around this Honestly, guy just trying to keep, I, like, like I, trying to do her own version of, uh, like, um, Dr. Strangelove. Yes. Like, the Elaine May version yeah. with Charles Grodin at oh the center of, of this, like, nuclear disaster. That could have been a really good movie in its own right. And I felt mad that I wasn't getting either, like, movie. <laughs> yeah. No, I know what you're saying. They're, you're totally right. I mean, obviously, impossible. We can't go back in time. But, God, I would love a movie of Charles Grodin's character like yeah. engaged in this stuff he because he was fun. so like like a veep like satire yeah like somebody who's just it, like those were the moment again and all the different intelligence officers in the different kinds of of costume and disguise i thought that that <laughs> those were some of the moments that i thought were actually the smartest and funnest and i realized it wasn't trying to be smart she wasn't you know it was trying to be broad um but damn but it gets that's there's a tone there's a yeah, tone dissonance totally there. but i think what's really unfortunate well and what's the obvious unfortunate thing we keep saying is like this was the last thing she directed yeah. And this fucking bullshit because even though it's a broad comedy and it's not great or whatever, you know, and it has good moments, 
like lots of people are well pe- men are permitted to make a flop and they don't lose their Meanwhile, careers. Meanwhile, we've got like epic movie and you know the audience oh, that's a very different Mike, well, and, uh, and Mike left Nichols field thing, who, but... you know, being her comedy partner, I think I think based on the interviews and conversations and and things I've seen of them together, I get the sense that she she I don't know intentionally or not draws a comparison of like her experience versus his experience. And it's very hard not to to you can't believe there's not sexism. I'm just, you know, like yeah. in, in in anything, but especially in Hollywood, because we should have still gotten more and more shades of her. We you should have, have gotten start, to you see. You have to start so strong and then stay strong, too. It's just different it's, different well, expectations placed on. Yeah. I mean, um, Mike Nichols made bombs. Like Yeah, but he, got, he had more, like, leverage to do that. Yeah. And he was, well, gi- and he he was, was given was, more. Well, and, like, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? He was given so much space to find that movie and to make it work yeah but when elaine needs more time and space it's like what a dumb little girl who doesn't know yeah. what she's doing yeah. and it's like it's it, and she and she of all women like oh my god i'm i, I couldn't even like look at her i think if i was in in her presence like i feel like i, I oh, can't she's not j-lo come on i'm just saying like i we yeah, can right. look she's at not elaine ellen. I just She's not Ellen. like she like she is to be beheld with like respect and honor, you know. Yeah, like I, as, as it's as has has been has is. It is Bins she's given. She's yeah. It's good. It's good. she's getting the recognition. She is getting her flowers, and she's making another film. So perhaps this isn't the last film. Yeah, you know, like yeah. let's. Here's where the like the probability split, and one went this way, and one went that. There's yeah. a universe in which this did happen, and where yeah. Charles Grodin got. I like some awesome TV show where he plays this guy, like yeah. the sort of CIA. Because, oh, my God, he was really just every time he showed up on screen, it like renewed my interest in the movie. It's great. Like it's, it, I needed him there. He's, he he does a great job playing that that character. It's another version oh, yeah. of like his character in Clifford. <laughs> just, yeah. But don't like, look at me. Look at me like a human boy. <laughs> yeah. I like this one because he's he's sort of at the end, like he, he's he's. <laughs> He's trying to balance everything. You just it's like the the code switching. Like he's such a perfect liar. He's such a perfect two-faced person and like I yeah. I don't know and I I loved all I liked the I think she just when she barely touched on satire, she was doing it so well, you yeah. know? It's like anyway. Yeah, it's the less is more thing. It's like Yeah. Um Yeah. When Waterworld was, you know, the big flop, it was referred to as fish tar. I just by some That's, people. That is funny. That is funny. That is funny. That is funny. Like if we're talking purely in terms yeah. of just like financial. Yeah. And there have been lots of flops. Again, they don't always ruin careers. I think something about it being a one word title and it has a distinct type of title. Like it's not, yeah. you know. It does sound like a punchline. It's got, it's, it's got, a, it literally has a whole mytho- mythos around it now. Yeah. You know? It does. It's yeah. It's got its absolutely. own culture. It's its own associations. Yeah. Like looking at a, a, a print of Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. What's funny though is that this movie, you know, it, it had great previews, like really mm-hmm. strong previews. People loved it. Um, it was number one the first weekend. Someone uh, said, I, there was another review and I didn't screenshot it, but uh-huh. it was a user on Rotten Tomatoes who said they remember seeing it in theaters and people yeah. were laughing throughout it. Yeah. Like it was actually very funny. The people were enjoying it in the theater. I mean, I some people hate this movie. Yes. It's kind of there's there's a lot of reviews that are like five star, one star, yeah. and then I'm of that like in the, middle, in the middle of like it's really not that bad, but it could have it it, it could have been so much better. It, yeah, and I think the fact that it was labored and overworked and that three people you feel were it. pulling at the the lever. Yeah. And I heard, by the way, like okay, I mentioned those three different cuts. When yeah. it came down to it, it was literally like screening the same three scenes from three different cuts and trying to decide which okay we'll go with that one we'll do that and they were all barely different i mean like fundamentally they were all basically the same i think there's just too much what a waste of just an an ego it's just like i'm sorry yeah no no it's not so no it's 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 interesting to talk about because that's been the it makes sense hearing some uh, like a story about like steven spielberg who doesn't like to rehearse with his actors because he's like, I'm setting up the shot. Mm-hmm. He's going, he's trying to establish a shot. Whereas I think with Elaine, she was going as opposed to like setting the shot being like, well, let's get all of them mm-hmm. and then we'll, mm-hmm. and then we'll decide in post. But then the post just seems to be consistently like an, an 
and a tremendous undertaking. I make that even when I'm making some dumbass video in my apartment, oh, I'll have that thinking of like, if I don't plan out what I'm going to shoot and I'm like, I'm just going to film myself for 30 minutes nope. and find three nope. minutes of something funny Terrible. in it. It's so awful trying yeah. to go through Play it. Playback that shit. And then yeah. the, you're watching mostly not good stuff. So then it convinces you it all suck. It's just, it's, oh, it's man. like, no, yeah. it's, it's tough. You're like, oh, no, it's shoot. tough. Like, and, and again, like, I mean, we talked about this on Mikey Nikki. She used to leave cameras running and she wouldn't call cut. It's just such a, like, I feel for her. I wish, I wish she had explored a different method. Because I, I think yeah. that really is the undoing is take it is, is, is she, it's it shows a lack of, of certainty too. Even if you feel confident that that works for you, which yeah, it had middling results already for her. So yeah. I would have liked for her to have tried yeah. something else at that point. Mm -hmm. But then you see her doing that. And there's all this. A lot of people are bearing witness to what looks like uncertainty. Yeah, it looks like a lack yeah. of confidence in your initial vision, which is why you have to do. Yeah, I'm only saying this because I'm fully projecting based no. off of like when I make videos and, no, no, no. and I, I don't mean, know exactly what I'm trying to make, and I'm yeah. I end up, and then I'll then I'll after all of that. Yeah, once you're really with it and you really find a story in it, then you're like, oh, I wish I had done this, this thing thing, and that's like the one. It's up. one thing you didn't do, and like. Like yeah. 30 minutes you shot yourself uh, yeah. something stupid like that no I mean I'm sure it's that experience but just like writ large you know yeah. and with like 108 hours of footage or whatever so insane thing it was I do want to mention some of the other movies that came were out that same sort of week weekend uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2 Ernest Goes to Camp I mean uh, I, I mean who can compete with that I mean Secret of My Success Ishtar, of course. The Gate, which Ishtar got compared against The Gate because they made approximately the same amount their opening weekend, but The Gate pretty much made back its money. And it was this like horror movie, which like, right, horror movies, high concept, low People budget. People are always gonna, gonna yeah. see. I would, I would sooner Those see a horror movie that's potentially bad than a comedy. I don't know, there's yeah. something about a horror movie usually is gonna. yeah. It's it's usually going to hit some certain markers. A lot of horror movies that like have make yeah, it's just they'll like, make big stylistic choices, well, or, or it's more likely to be unintentionally it, funny. Horror movies are such a, a natural first film for somebody who doesn't have money yeah. to make because it's a high. It's like you just get people in a big Less house. Is more. It's high concept. It's you know, it's 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 in the mind or it's psychological. So like, it really comes down to like a very strong idea. So I don't think it's it was not fair of people to like make that comparison. It's like, well, this is a story set in Morocco, so fuck off. Um, <sighs> Anyway, other movies, uh, The Chipmunk Adventure, Platoon. Oh, The Chipmunk Adventure. Platoon was out, oh, yeah. um, Lethal Weapon, Blind Date, and Crocodile Dundee. I'm sorry, The Chipmunk Adventure, though. Yeah. That's the real one we should be comparing to Ishtar, because that is also a road movie, <laughs> and they end up in the desert at various points. Yeah. There is stuff that has dated poorly and is problematic, culturally speaking, but there's some real satire about diamonds mm -hmm. in it. There's yeah. diamonds and... Um, Penguins. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually there's a lot of overlap between the Chipmunk Adventure. I've and, never and seen the Ishtar. Chipmunk Adventure. You really should. Okay. You it's really, really the appropriate. They're companion. singing. It's a, they're both musical movies. That's true. And it's about musical in this case chipmunks, and and there's also gender dynamics being explored between the chipettes and the chipmunks. Um, I'll stop telling the truth. <laughs> is dangerous business. Honestly, I do have that section. They, ex head a they bit. could exist in the same world. They could. Um, I do want to mention that also one of the jokes about this movie is that it was called Warren's Gate because I guess Heaven's Gate was a movie that lost 126 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So like this still isn't the biggest flop ever. I just you know want to make that absolutely clear to people. Um, anyway. Who yeah? Who's your best sporting player? I think yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, Charles Grodin. Charles Grodin, of course. It's because you it's he, you cannot make the argument that he's a main player, but he is the most like. Oh, he does so it, much work. It's the most. He's a very type. supportive player. He should. He's he holding should up a whole it. side of the house. He really should be up in it so much more for how like. Yeah. Yeah, he's just underutilized. I, I would rather I, he was a main character than a supporting character. I also felt like he was one of the one of just like the women earlier in the story. He was one of the people who had the appropriate op opinion and uh, yeah. estimation of these men. Yes, <laughs> he saw exactly who he was dealing with. Yeah, and I think that's 
you know. I think that's funny. He's intelligent, but I, he's still at their mercy a bit. Yes. And that's all, there was humor in those mo- scenes, you yeah. know, like, or like, what are they doing? Why are they walking around like, camel's blind? Yeah. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> I just think it's, yeah, you had two different movies. Two different movies. And both of them yep. could have been really good separately. I know. Would you watch this again? Eh, parts of it if it was on i I would i would look at it every so often but it would still lose me in the middle i think i want to watch just the parts where they're like writing really bad songs i want to i want to memorize all the bad songs that they wrote the first third and the last 20 minutes yeah that's good that's good yeah you that's good stuff that's good stuff there's just a little bit of fluff in the middle it's just marshmallow fluff it's just the everything that happens while they're there I just don't. Not, I just yeah. don't really care. And the, the, just and like turn it up when Charles Grodin shows up because he's funny. Yeah, it was all kind of like there was that part where where he where Dustin Hoffman's doing like that sort of offensive like he's doing he's yeah. pretending he's talking to the people but he's kind of trying to help them though. So I was like, okay. I mean, but yeah, that was one of those scenes where I was like, I I literally had to remind myself like, okay, they're they're idiots, and the funny thing is not the imitating the language but i don't i just i'm not sold I, that it's self-aware enough oh i, I know i'm just not I sold know. that it's self-aware. I, I would love to believe that that it I has know. those layers i want to believe that too but also i i, I don't think, I, think he, I don't think justin hoffman played it with that with no, that, those layers no and <sighs> and i think like if i were were i in the theater yeah i'd be concerned about what people were laughing at exactly that's the, that's the trick too with satire yeah. When you play with satire, if you're mm-hmm. not, if if it's not, it can go over people's heads. It can go over people's heads, and there's always obvi- the danger. There's like a spectrum of it, right? Yeah. There's um, people we know who do bad satire, and then there's like, um, like the producers and Mel Brooks. Like there's you, but there's mm. a clear yeah. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not well, articulate enough think, for this. And Lindsay Ellis did a really good Mel Brooks video talking about yeah. the purpose and and responsibility that you take on when you do satire. Yeah, yeah. It's serious. You know, business. Intentionality. Is, yeah, is making it clear like very important where you're at. Who, what's the engine? Yes. Yeah. Well. Um. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Would you watch this again? Uh. Yeah. I think I would actually, but just for songs and Groden. Yeah, and maybe to prove to people that it's not that bad, but um, yeah, but not. I'm not gonna do it probably anytime immediately. I would rather, yeah, like I'd rather. I'd rather watch, watch the Heartbreak Kid, Heartbreak Kid again for sure. Ugh. Then yeah, then, then a, a new leaf. leaf. Then Mikey and Nikki. Mikey and Nikki's great, but just not a laugh riot. Yeah, no, it's That's pretty. Right. It's it's pretty. It's it's a pretty huge. Down I mean, here. I love. I mean, Casavetes and Falk are like no. It's a great, it's and you all know, their moments and, together are great. It just it is such a depressing. It is, but it's a bleak. It has a bleak message. It is, but it's also kind of like and and the, you know Meg, she's been screwed a lot, but like yeah, um, that was one of those ones though that like she got to kind of run wild a little bit and yeah. with two collaborator actors who really like got it. They were like they, they, they got they, it. They were on board and they, there was no like. Oh, what is she doing? No, yeah. they trusted her. Yeah. Like they were all. <sighs> I think it's also t- it comes down to like yeah again the supl- simplicity of the story, because yeah. when you're dealing with a story like like with Ishtar it has this many layers of tomfoolery, it's convoluted. hard not to be like, are you a little over your head? I mean, there's a map and it there's all this. Oh the yeah, CIA the map thing was so unbelievable to me when I they know. He fi- they just turn around his hat, his shirt and then see and they're able to read it as a map. I was like, there's no way I would know. No, that this no. was a map, and, and I, I some of those moments take me out of movies. Even like um, a more recent example, I watched Glass Onion, and there's a the yeah. moment there's a moment in that where someone is supposed to read between the lines of what someone else is saying. I don't know if you watched it yet. I haven't watched it yet. Okay, I'm not spoiling it, but no, I am okay. going to say that they're similar to when there's a discovery of the map in Ishtar, mm-hmm. and they Warren Beatty's character just knows, oh, this is north, south, he, this is the sun it. coming up there. I, I'm not saying that, maybe I'm just really stupid and I just don't know how to read maps, but like... I just it it felt a little far fetched that they would just they would immediately ab- into it. They would totally be able to like figure that out. Yeah, I and mean, the same with Glass. There's a moment in Glass Onion where there's a character that it's a really badass scene and I love it. Yeah, but it's also like I don't know. 
I would not have figured this out. Yeah, yeah. I would not have figured that out. I hear what you're saying. From what from what this character I mean, was telling me. This movie's definitely not about realism, but I also but I still think you have a legitimate point. I think there's yeah. I think it's a little too it just, just it, you know, it yeah, just it's it, disjointed. It, it had a it had so many things going against it. And so yeah. I think like that anything funny was captured and put together at all is is a uh, is success. Yeah. Kitty. Oh, she gets Oh no. Oh, she says she's stuck. She's in the swing. She's in the swing now. No. Like a cat getting all caught up in the cords. Cord. Um, Kitty cord swing. I do want to mention that the George Sanders impression contest is still going on. Yeah. I should put this at the top. And uh, deadline is New Year's. I haven't like posted that anywhere, but people who have reached out have asked, and that is the deadline. And they know it's the deadline. But if you're interested in doing your submitting your silky smooth impression. What else are you doing? Yeah. What else are you doing? Get in there. George Sanders, you know, in honor of last week's episode, Lord. Again, want to mention if you want to know more about Elaine May or some of those other films that we were mentioning, please go back and listen to episodes 1, 20, or 41 or all three. All three. And then this one. Now it's like a complete set. The box collection. Yeah. Um. You know, and you can give yourself a little stamp or something. I don't know. Yeah. Give yourself a gold star. Uh, you can email us at a breath of fresh movie at gmail.com. We're yeah. also on Twitter still uh, and yes. Instagram at Fresh Movie Pod. It'll be, it'll, it's still going to be around. Hey, he might leave. I think he wants to. I think he's being run out of town. I think he wants which to. Which is fucking hilarious. Uh, thanks. All right. Bye. Merry Christmas. Merry Bye. Christmas. <laughs>